We have finally arrived at the first Hurley-centric episode. Last episode was centered around well-known areas. This one has a large trek across the island. It's October the 26th, day 35 on the island. Hurley helps out the raft builders. Michael wants to bring a radio on the raft, but they quickly conclude that it would have no power. Hurley suggests using batteries from Rousseau, but Said refuses to help them find her. He perfectly encapsulates the lost fan community when talking about her maps. Now you thought that they were pointing to something. Well, I was wrong. Well, maybe they're pointing to her. Look, I don't even know what these papers mean. Hurley discovers the numbers on a paper. At night, he leaves the camp and wakes up Saeed while stealing some of the maps, including the overhead map. The great thing about it is that despite a lot of weird notations in French, the cable really is drawn on the map. He goes back to the caves. The next morning, he packs some water, talks to Charlie and heads off. Back at the beach, the raft building continues. Claire goes into the jungle with Locke to help him with his building project. I mentioned in the previous episode that Locke might have created a workspace here. He has built a table and made glue from animal fat. Harley probably came back to the original camp, figured out where he was on the map and cut inland. The fuselage is all gone, he rode it away into the ocean. I doubt he bothered going through the lava rock area. I'll be fine. Said, Charlie and Jack venture out to catch him. Said mentions that they'll reach out to him before nightfall, if they are lucky. So yeah, Hurley definitely takes the short route through the jungle here. He arrives at the beach and finds the cable. He follows the cable inland. He steps on a pressure plate trap, just as Said, Jack and Charlie find him. Standing on a pressure trigger. Hurley jumps and avoids getting pierced. Said takes the lead and the cable goes underground. In season 3 episode 11, we'll learn that this cable goes underground all the way up to the flame. The cable stops right near this gorge. We are now at the rope bridge. This is in my opinion one of the coolest locations on the show and we only see it once. First of all, everything from below this line is CGI. The top here is shot near a dirt road at Kualora Ranch, the same ranch we've seen before, otherwise known as the Golf Course Valley. The crew erected a structure on this side and did the rest with green screen. You can even see the logs that support the bridge. We've actually seen the location once before on the show. When the characters climb up the mountain in the pilot, they climb up this wall here. The rest is CGI. I want to talk a little bit about the wall bridge and therefore I'll take a step back in time. Modern suspension bridges like this use steel wires and chains, but older civilizations used native materials. On one of the handrails you see the remains of some rope, which might have fallen over time that this rope bridge used to be a true rope bridge, common in the Inca period. Okay, once we cross this bridge it's only an hour to the palace. Good, because believe it or not, I think I need a bath. I believe it. What was that? On your feet, soldiers! Later in the show, we'll learn that the island is moving and has been home to many civilizations. Even in the Lampo station, we see that the island has been in the South Pacific Ocean, close to Peru and Chile. This rope bridge could very likely have been built by a civilization from the Inca Empire, and in the traditions of the Incas, rebuilt again. The Quechuachaca Bridge, linking the massive territory by way of what is now known as the Great Inca Road, has been built and rebuilt continuously for five centuries. Today, it's the last remaining Inca suspension bridge. After careful examination of this episode, we can see that there's modern nylon ropes underneath the bridge, as well as black duct tape. But I think that is more of a production issue. Now with the high definition, we can easily spot bloopers from the crew. To summarize, I think that 500 years ago, this area might have been much more dangerous and in need of a rope bridge. At some point, the Incas on the island died out and the bridge got dilapidated over time. Let's examine this gorge. First of all, I'm not a geologist, so I'm not an expert on this field. This is just my two cents on the matter. As you see on the last map, I've made sure that the locations near the crater have all been affected by the volcanic flow on the island. 
I mentioned basalt flow in my episode on solitary, since Rousseau had written it on her map, which is the result of a volcanic eruption covering large stretches of land. I think that what we see here is a lava plateau. Quoting Wikipedia, Lava plateaus are formed by highly fluid basaltic lava during numerous successive eruptions through numerous vents without violent explosions. In some cases, a lava plateau may be part of a single volcano. The Pajarito Plateau in New Mexico, USA is an example of a volcanic plateau. Another example is the Deccan Traps in India. They consist of multiple layers of solidified flood basalt, creating vast gorges and valleys. But the island of Lost isn't modeled after New Mexico or India, it's modeled after the Hawaiian Islands. Just look at the ancient Kauai volcano that has erupted, collapsed and eroded. The Hawaiian Islands are known for its volcanic activity, both in the past and present. The island of Lost has simply replicated that. Yes, Hurley, we are going to need a lot more rocks. There's a lava field about a half a mile inland. It's just loaded with them. I'll talk a little bit more about this later, especially when we come to the season 3 finale, Through the Looking Glass, which will reconcile both this map and Ben's map, and the changes that are made due to volcanic activity. Now back to the episode. I never mentioned anything about a bridge. I never saw this before. Hurley and Charlie walk over the bridge, it collapses. Jack suggests that they'll stay on this side while Jack and Said will find a way over. Jack hits a trip wire, setting off an explosion of Rousseau's camp. Jack! The hell was that? Hurley and Charlie are aimlessly walking around in this area. Rousseau shoots at them, they separate, before Danielle finds Hurley. He asks her about the numbers, and she agrees that they are cursed. Charlie runs away, and manages to find a way over the gorge. There is a strong possibility that a landmass or something has collapsed, making it very easy to run to the other side. Charlie meets Jack and Said at the destroyed shelter. You see that they still have the mountains in the background. Hurley returns with a battery to the group. By nightfall, they come back to the beach. Locke completes the building project, it's a cradle. Hurley tells Charlie about his secret. They both will likely go back to the caves, since they are part of the cave group as well as Locke and Jack. The episode ends with the camera zooming in on the numbers on the hatch. It's not the point of view of any characters, just to give us, the viewer, a relationship with the numbers. Just like Danielle and Hurley has. Now that Danielle is no longer obsessed with them, the show spins around. Now we are obsessed with them. Stay tuned for the next episode. If you like the enormity of this trek, then you'll like the next one too. It's in the same league. Please share and subscribe and see you next week for more island exploration.